Hello, and welcome to Unsheathed with your hosts, Kyle Gold and Cam Hirosaki. We hope that you enjoy the program. Please stick around afterwards. There'll be cake and blowjobs. So uh, I'll take my bow now and say the last 10 minutes was not being recorded. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. That was all just I practice. I appreciate that. That was practice. However, this, this apology is being recorded live. So, um, yeah. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> it's episode 57 all over again. So, um, I, c- I commend your bravery, though. You can just let him go. <laughs> sorry, guys, I lost it. The hard drive crashed. No episode. <clears throat> so, five, four, three, two, one. Hi, everybody, again, and welcome to the second second annual <laughs> Fall Furry Meet. Unsheed number 62, live from Chicago in the heart of the Midwest. Welcome to Illinois, people. Yay. Yay, Illinois. And there was much rejoicing. I am Kyle Gold. I am Cam Hirosaki. (laughs) But you already knew that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So... We've been we've all been here in Chicago this weekend and having a good time. We've met up with a bunch of our friends, a bunch of our uh, publishers, and earlier today I read a little bit from chapter one of the Out of Position sequel and showed everybody the cover and revealed the title. The title is Isolation Play. So Full Press is definitely doing a hardcover edition of it. It will be a very limited run. They are taking pre-orders here at the convention. Uh, which will be far too late for any of you listening at home to order it. But by the time this is up, you should be able to go online to sofawolf.com, and there will be instructions magically appear in there beamed into your heads if you would like to pre-order the hardcover. Um, You cannot pre-order the softcover. They're going to make plenty of those. Everybody will get one. Um, But the cover was very well received. It is a beautiful cover. Blotch has outdone himself. And... Uh, everybody seems to like the title. They feel it's very, um, uh, what's the word? Fitting? Uh, not Evocative. fitting, but um, ominous. Yeah. Ominous was the word. Ominous, yeah. Ominous was the word we were going for. I'm sorry, no points this round. Uh, um, how about yourself, Cam? What have you been up to this weekend and the past week or so? I don't know. Something about stuffing sausages in my mouth. I don't know. Yeah. I, I've, I've heard that you'll wait a long time for a good sausage fest. Yes. The joke wasn't any funnier the second time. No, it wasn't. <laughs> However, I, I did, I can safely say, never before have I waited outside in the cold for an hour plus to get a hot dog with foie gras on it. So that was an experience. Ah, it sounds like a great one. Yeah. And uh, you and Summerhill are doing better? Mm-hmm. We made up. There was, you know, hugging and, you know, not quite kissing. I don't, I don't, I don't know what level our relationship is at yet, really. Yeah, I'm not I'm sure still either. sort of testing the waters. He, he does have kind of an affinity for otters. So yeah, that's you true. Might, you might want to watch yourself there. Yeah. But no, so I've been working on that. Oh. And I've, oh. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I've also recently finished up a story for something else that we may be hearing about later. Yeah, as a, you know, by a staggering coincidence, all the these publishers we've been talking to have joined us here for the podcast, and they so also we'll be, just happen to sort of be in Chicago. They happen to sort of be in Chicago this weekend for some reason, and they've brought along a list of things that they're excited about telling you about for next year. So we're going to talk to um, Jeff from Sofa Wolf and Fuzz from Fur Planet uh, as soon as we finish up. Uh, we're very happy to have all you guys here today. We have this huge audience. I believe KM counted them at about 489. So thank you all for coming out here on a Saturday night. We know you have many options for your entertainment on a Saturday night, and we appreciate you choosing ours. Um, Yeah, we're competing with some heavy stuff, I think. Well, the the Kage 2 charity um, joke fest, whatever, is not until after we wrap up here. So I think a lot of people are going straight from this to something actually funny. Oh. But yeah. less instructive about writing, I Otters would venture and sausage, to say. what, something. And we have provided cookies and milk, which is just a tease for y'all back home, but hopefully an incentive for you to come to the next show, which will be at Further Confusion in January of this year. Next and year. Of, right. The next January coming up. 
there's a little calendar change in between here and there yeah. i keep trying to forget about um so yes we have thanks to our wonderful producer wolf kit we have wine for people and we have cookies and milk which can be enjoyed together or separately i believe and we've also got uh little tags for unsheathed live that were made up um, specifically for this show, despite the fact that they have a different location and date on them. Yeah, I don't know how that happened. That was just a misprint. I'm going to fire the intern again. <laughs> fire the new intern? Yes. Okay. Um, so anyway. So it's okay, he's a lousy kisser. <laughs> what we're going to do here is we're going to talk a little bit to the publishers we mentioned. We're going to let them take some of your questions, if you guys have any. And then we're going to talk a little bit and take any questions you guys have about writing. Um, if you have questions about isolation play, feel free to bring them up at this time as well. And I will do my best to answer them. If you have questions about Summerhill, I'm sure if, Cam would love to talk about that. If you have questions about my non-existent book that I've barely told you anything about, by all means ask. <laughs> vaporware. Oh. It's not Vaporware. I've seen I have it. questions about your non-existent book. Okay. There we go. Um, so, I believe we're starting with Jeff from Sofa Wolf. Okay. Welcome. So, you're starting with me. Hi. How are you doing? This Good. is Jeff Thank Eddie, you. the the, uh, the president and chief bottle washer of Sofa Wolf Press. Supreme overlord. Yes, supreme overlord. The, the guy who does life. all the accounting and and all that, all that boring, dislikable stuff. And signs the royalty checks. Yes, and signs the royalty checks, which is a good thing, which... Speaking of which, I have to get you one sometime. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so they asked me on to talk a little bit about our upcoming schedule and kind of say what we're working on and what we're going to be working on and what we hope to be working on, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we have a big year coming up. Uh, there's a lot of new things on on the schedule and a lot of big things. It's it's going to be a real... A real uh, challenging but exciting year for self wolf so um starting with uh further confusion we have uh of course blotch is going to be the goh there which is uh pretty exciting um yay, as, blotch. yay for blotch as many are potentially aware they're working on this project called across thin ice which they've been working on for about two plus years now um and the initial plan had been to do the big release at Further Confusion, where they're GOH, but that is not going to be the case. Um, they have had to push the release back a little bit to um, to Anthrocon. So, um, so Across Thin Ice will be out at Anthrocon. Um, they will have everything pretty much completed in time for Furcon, so they should have a lot of great previews, and they'll be talking about it a lot, and they'll have a lot of great stuff to show off. But uh, the books... Uh, will take a little bit longer to pull together than the raw art I involved so it will be a little bit before then and we decided we might as well just push it all the way off to the next major con as opposed to to trying to release it mid spring sometime so we're gonna push it off to anthrocon so and so forth always does um a good job i know there's um a lot of questioning well if you have all the art why can't it come out the next month but you guys always do a great job putting together a really professional looking uh work and a lot of time goes into that so it's not just sort of throw it all into the printer and out comes a book yeah uh yeah um, beyond the actual f physical lead time for for printing and we're doing offset for across the ice because we're doing a really large run um it it takes a long time to turn around offset and you want to make sure you get the proofing right and all the pre-flight and all the layout and design and all the extras and on all those goodies that have to be added and put together and so yeah yeah that, that takes a good chunk of time and the creator doesn't just snap their fingers and suddenly a book happens <laughs> not creators can think not, that <laughs> not, not not with a graphic novel that's 100 pages um so to talk about the things that we will have at Further Confusion, um, we have the release of Isolation Play, of course, which will be coming out in both hardcover and softcover. Um, we have a limited run of hardcover, as was mentioned, and we're um, taking pre-orders here at the convention that's in town right now. 
Um, <laughs> that, that other convention. Right, that other convention. And uh, we are also going to be taking uh, pre-orders through the website. Um, the hardcover run is, 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 is a new experience for us, uh, and it's going to be um, it's a considerable outlay. Um, the the pre-orders are um, thirty nine ninety five, um, and I will happily say that we're making less profit on the hard covers than we do on the soft covers because they're very expensive. So, um, in small runs, they are super cool. It's going to be cloth bound with the with the um, uh, the foil title on the spine and a and a dust jacket and the whole thing. So, and uh, and we are really gonna good. we are gonna try to hand number them. Um, I'm gonna be around so forth central toward the end of december and uh so the idea is to have the hard covers in and we'll have a little hand numbering party kind of like we did the sign and party a couple thanksgivings ago or one thanksgiving ago we can tell people they have my eye prints on them yes <laughs> So we'll have uh, um, details on the website about how to order, f- uh, pre-order for those who are not here. Um, uh, it will, will it be on the website? Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shortly after this convention is over and we get back and can get settled. I would say after Thanksgiving. But okay, I, I was going to say where. Like, Do they just a, go a to sort of the cow gold section of the catalog and it'll be an entry under that? Um, we will make sure it appears on multiple places. We'll have you link to it from your website yep. and tweet okay. about it and so on. So you might already be a pre-order. Flash, flash, yeah. flash, flash, flash. flash. <laughs> um, Edmund will, Mayen will come to your house. It will probably not be through the catalog. We will probably have to have you order the old-fashioned way lo- like sending us an email and working out a PayPal payment because the the catalog doesn't do pre-orders very well, but we'll we'll jump that technical hurdle when we get there. So um, we'll figure it out. But um, so the isolation isolation play hardcover and softcover. Um, it should be very exciting. Um, it already is very exciting. Yes, it is very exciting. At least for me. <laughs> and it's very exciting that it's 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 done and out the door, and yes. I can work on other things now. So <laughs> yes, you and me both. Uh, we're also going to have um, the the long-awaited release of the um, second part of Ursula Vernon's Black Dogs. Um, we're going to be re-releasing the first part um, because both are going to have new covers, um, and there's going to be some edits and some minor changes. So it'll be the the uh, part one second edition and the part two first edition. Uh, the part two edition is entitled "The Mountain of Iron," uh, and it completes the story. It's a it's a two part, not a trilogy, so you won't have to wait forever for for part three. I was uh, cursing him earlier when he showed me the matching covers, which look gorgeous. I'm like, well, great. Now I have to drop money on buying Black Dogs Part 1 again because I need to have the matching set. The artist named Talenchi did the covers, and they're very uh, they're very stylistic and woodcutty and very very nicely designed. And Right. She also did the cover for Heat 7 uh, as, our, as our editor of... of Heat 7 just reminded me from the audience. So, yeah, um, she also did the cover for Heat 7, so that's much the same sort of thing. So, I'm so not sure. Have we mentioned Black Dogs in the podcast before? If um, not, I think it, we might have. But we probably have a while ago, but it, 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 is, it is a very good book, and you should yeah. definitely check it out. It's a great fantasy adventure novel. Um, Ursula has a really great descriptive voice. And a, and a cool sort of, like, sarcastic, slightly sarcastic, attitude the, yeah. the narrative voice that comes through the whole adventure which is great it's a um, fantasy story that people who enjoy fantasy can enjoy and that uh, but at the same time it pokes fun light fun at some of the fantasy mores um, it likes to sort of turn the 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 standard fantasy formula a little bit on its head um, without really being disrespectful to the overall form of of the fantasy yeah. novel I, so. I, li- I like her take on elves especially and how they sort yes. of rub against the grain of typical fantasy elves yeah so those are the two releases we have um scheduled for further confusion and that it doesn't sound like a lot but it's going to be a lot with the hardcovers and everything else to deal with so um we're very excited about getting that done and uh we're looking forward to seeing blotch as their GOHs and and having a good time out there it ought to be a fun con 
Okay, so, uh, moving on. I just saw a signal over there and was wondering if I should pay attention to something. Oh, um, oh the pins. Right, right. That's it. That's the signal. I need a, like, mirror here so I can look <laughs> forward and actually see what's going on over there. Um, we have um, pins made up with the um, Chevali Firebirds logo. And the pins are free with purchase of the pre-order of the hardcover and will be available for sale probably only at conventions, although I don't know, we may put them online, who knows, uh, for like five bucks or so. So, yeah. Are, are you going to toss them in with the hardcovers for people who order online as well? Yes. Okay. Cool. Sure. Why not? <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's Business a, decisions. That's a- this is Unsheathed 62, business decisions being made live and in front of y'all. There's a, there's a page on TV Trubs for sure, why not? <laughs> Which is all about like, yeah, okay. Sure. Cool. Um, I like that phrase a little too much. So <laughs> moving on through uh, a c- couple other things we have coming up here. Um, the next conventions we do in the spring are like more in the mainstream c- comics realm. Um, WonderCon and emerald city comic-con in um seattle uh wondercon is in san francisco and um most of the time we don't have anything new for that um this year i believe we're going to have the release of um for piled five which is going to be the finale of the series um and we'll be releasing that for those two cons or or sometime in that time frame. We haven't quite worked it out exactly, but it'll be available at those cons and online afterwards and, of course, at all the, the cons we go to afterwards. So uh, it'll be fun to sort of provide those cons with something special because we haven't yet. Normally they kind of fall into the shadow area in between our big release schedules. So. Uh, and then um, coming around to Anthrocon, there's just a whole ton of stuff coming out for Anthrocon. Um, we have Across Thin Ice, of course, and the Across Thin Ice hardcover. Um, we haven't entirely settled on a layout size yet, but um, they'll be large, at least. Um, uh, Dog's Day size, maybe a little larger. Um, yes, big. Fucking um, huge. As Fuzz would say in his native tongue. And, of course, everyone who has even heard about the project uh, um, uh, it's uh, uh, Nordgar- uh, Nordgard.com. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, Nordgard.com. Most people have heard about it. Everyone's excited about it. Um, the art's amazing. Yeah, they're, the art looks gorgeous. They're hand painting the entire thing. They're absolutely insane. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but and, and if they weren't to start, they have been driven insane yes, by now. If they weren't oh, yeah. at the beginning, they have been driven quite insane by this point. I, know, yeah. I remember hearing that you were just talking about the research was kind of driving them insane to yeah. make sure everything was accurate about it. Uh, so that's going to be a big, big, big thing. Um, it's uh, going to be big here. It's going to be big at Comic Con. It's going to be big in in a lot of in a lot of ways. So and huge in Japan exciting. and huge in Japan. Um, the uh, the finale of uh, Digger, which will be Volume Six, will also be out uh, for C- C- Comic Con and Anthrocon. Uh, we're still working out with Ursula what kind of to do to um, make the last volume extra special so we'll uh we'll definitely include something that gives it a good send-off because it'll be an interesting end to the story so be very exciting there too biting pair with every volume yes yeah (laughs) um we have done a lot of the story selection for heat eight um including stories by both of your two podcasters here yes um, very exciting so Thank and you. of we course many you. other great yeah. stories as well so yes. that's yeah. great we're, we're always happy to get acceptances and especially for a quality publication like heat and we're in the process of uh of uh lining up comics and and arranging all that out so there's a lot of work to go but we're plugging on through it that'll be quite exciting as well um new novel in uh from a new writer, um, Tempe Okun. Um, Six is Wild, Manifest Destiny is a, uh, it's a uh, male-female romance, uh, western setting, late, late 1800s, um, in, in the West, and uh, uh, yes, westerns are usually in the West. <laughs> um, Sometimes they're in Japan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Or in, or in space. Yes. Or in Spain. Yeah, like a space firefly. Um, and, and we did hear a short selection from that novel yep. read by the author 
uh, earlier today at the Sofa Wolf preview, which uh, was very entertaining. So we're all quite looking forward to that. Read wonderfully by the author, I have to yeah. say. There was a lot of zing to it. A lot of zing. And, and a lot did of different gestures. voices, which I always admire. That's great. Um, and then uh, New Fables 2011, I believe. Um, Tim Sussman's working on that one. So, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So good. And that'll be a pretty big release. We're going to have a lot of stuff. We're going to have a lot of books out there. It, it's going to be very exciting. Um, good con. Save your money. And then uh, really everything else is sort of in the kind of sketchy category at um, this point, except for one really good announcement, which I can now kind of call out and that's that uh we're going to be doing the print edition for um lynn hogan is also known as uh lady foxglove in the fandom um uh her uh webcomic pridwin um we're going to be doing the volume one of that uh and it will be colored by a uh colorist so online at the moment they're black and white most of them um but we're going to do a color release and that'll be pretty cool so which is awesome that's a fun story it's really cool it's a great story it's a great adventure kind of comic and um from talking to her about the future plans for it it's 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 going to be a very interesting project as a total so cool Um, um um and there was just one more um two more quick things i wanted to touch on if we have a second um we will be doing another t-shirt for the summer um the website's coming along and we hope to have that online pretty soon uh we've got a lot of the technical glitches worked out uh and the new website should be much nicer and a lot easier to keep updated and then uh we do have one more project that i would mention in passing and that's that over the years um for heat we've had stories come in which are too long for the format uh we do have a limit as to how how long the stories can be and we've had stories which are good but just kind of too long and we weren't able to run them in the magazine we've um uh started planning uh for pulling these stories and a c- couple other ones t- together into an anthology which we're going to call hot dish um which will be coming out um sometime we don't know exactly when yet i would probably not expect it until next furcon 2012 probably would be a good number but but i wouldn't wouldn't stand by that so the nebula sketchy future yes exactly so certainly you guys that's what we got you got plenty to keep yourselves busy yeah and then some um one more question because people have been asking at the convention here um we're planning to do a reissue of the original out of position in hardcover edition to match the second book oh yes right right um Yes, we will be doing a re-release of the original out of position as a hardcover, um, much like the new one. And uh, I can't give you any exact dates on that. We will probably know more in time for Furcon, so we may be taking pre-orders on that. And we'll probably include some extra material and some other stuff just to make it a little bit more special yeah i think most of the people listening know that i put up a bonus story for out of position on fur affinity earlier this year uh one of my thoughts was to try to include that in the hardcover so that there's because i I feel guilty making people buy a book twice and i figure if we can give them a little bit extra that would be kind of nice so um i'll see if i can do that and the book has to be relayed out and everything so it just but it'll be about the same size it'll be the same size in the same format so they go together well so i'm just picturing some horrible advertising campaign now it's like is your old original copy of how to position two worn out and sticky (laughs) 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 shiny new hardcover i am a terrible person has it been passed around too many times (laughs) has this book been through too many people's paws for you to feel comfortable picking it back out (laughs) the kindle edition you can wipe the screen now (laughs) Nice. This is why I bring wine to the podcast. Thank you, Jeff. Um, if You're any of you guys welcome. have questions, by the way, uh, please sort of come up to the front there because the microphone cord that we have doesn't reach too far. Um, oh, and, tech weasel will and help our, you. Our uh, assistant weasel will will help. Uh, so, if you guys have questions for Jeff, 
Any or questions for, for me at this point in time? Okay. Well, then I was I was uh, very informative. Uh, you, were, I you were definitely very That's clear and left excellent. no room for doubt. Yeah, you you informed me of things that I wasn't aware of. My exactly. work here is done. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you, everybody. And we have with us um, another furry publisher. Hello. Hey, Fuzz. Hi down there. Are you are you okay with the microphone? You understand how these microphone things work and how to talk and all that? I put it in my mouth. You know, what right. the, you, know <laughs> you understand that we're doing a podcast here. I don't know if you're familiar with podcasting. I, I, haven't, I thought this was being pressed onto vinyl. Oh, <laughs> yeah. We should totally do like volume one of Unsheathed on vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> Just get those little CDs that look like vinyl and you can burn onto them. Yes. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. And we understand you have some exciting new products to talk about as well. Yeah, I've got a, I got a little list growing here uh, that I've made on my phone. So. <laughs> uh, let me guess, just uh, jump right into that then. We have um, two uh, new titles coming out for FC. Uh, one novella, one novel. Um, we have a novella, Smiley and the Hero, which is by Tube. And um, I guess I'd describe it as sort of a dark fable um, we had a, I guess, a, a difficult decision trying to figure out how to best describe it because it's, it could be like a children's story, but it it's a bit dark too. So I think it'll be really interesting. Uh, it's about a young bunny, uh, basically, is taking on the town gangster, and I actually, um, you guys have had uh, Tube or his evil counterpart well, we've had, we've had on not tube on the show i don't believe we've ever had tube on the show as. well if we have had somebody who was decidedly not tube yes. well if it was not tube, he'd have only bad things not to tube. say about it so don't listen to him okay it's, i don't anyway it's okay. tube and it's awesome not, not tube does lie <laughs> all the time the He's other like bizarro superman <laughs> <laughs> it's like bizarro tube <laughs> what happens in bizarro world stays in bizarro world the other title we have coming out at fc is uh, Beautiful World by uh, Christina Tracer. And this is, um, it's interesting because it actually has uh, humans and furries in it. It's a male-female romance. It involves uh, basically a virtual reality type simulation where um, the main character has decided that he's going to be permanently uploaded to it as he has no use for his body anymore. And he's fallen in love with a female uh, raccoon character in the game who is incredibly lifelike uh, because of all the programming in, in the UI and the interface and all that. Um, and I have not finished reading it. I believe Tyrion has read it, so I don't know how it ends. So we can find out on this journey together. But uh, what I've read so far, I've, I've really liked, uh, and it has a, a very nice cover. And moving on, uh, the next book, I believe, will be ready by Furry Fiesta. Um, you guys are probably familiar with Phil Goish and his work. He's been uh, kind of a staple of the fandom for a long time. Um, his book is called Resisting Arrest. It's uh, something he wrote um, several years ago and is uh, touched up and gone through and done some editing and everything it's about uh novella length and it's um it's another human furry story which is interesting i didn't realize we had so many of those um it's uh basically there's a, a character who appears to be tw a 12 year old boy but in this uh sci-fi world you can get tanked where they can screw around with your dna a little bit and being arrested is is it's in the term of um, arrested development so he's chronologically he's actually 17 but his mother has chosen to keep him uh, looking like a 12 year old because she doesn't think he's ready to be grown up yet um the one benefit of it was that he was given silver uh silver skin so that was kind of cool through this kind of customization, this is also how the, um, Phil introduced furries into this universe because you can be basically turned into an anthro animal um, through this technology. He ends up at one point um, with a traveling circus, and the the ringleader is an anthropomorphic rabbit. So, of course, the gag is he pops out of a gigantic hat at the beginning of the act. 
but it, it's uh, it's a sci-fi coming of age type of story, which uh, is is very good. I really enjoyed it. Hope you do too. Um, the other thing we'll probably have out either between I put it under Furry Fiesta. It might come out earlier than that. Is we've just um, finalized uh, agreements with TK Die to uh, publish all three volumes of his Newshounds webcomic, which I'm sure some folks have read, uh, and another uh, webcomic he's done called Something Happens. So we'll have all of those coming up uh, between FC and Furry Fiesta. As soon as we get home, I'm putting the layout together. He already uh, sent me all the files on that. Um, a couple of other things here. Um, we have, uh, so far right now, I just have one thing written down for Anthrocon. I'm sure that schedule is going to fill out a little bit more by the time we uh, get to Anthrocon. Um, but it's our uh, first crack at uh, a themed anthology, uh, which is called The Fortune Teller's Poem. And the uh, editor and the person that thought this up is uh, one of our authors, uh, Siani, who is here with us now. Yay. Hey. <laughs> Uh, he's the author of the um, the Walls series of uh, fantasy novels, uh, Transcending Howled Walls, which just came out at this convention. Uh, and he has gathered together quite a uh, august um, group of authors here. Uh, there's uh, seven stories, of course. Um, Siani is writing one. Uh, Tiran, my uh, partner in crime at Far Planet. Foosball. Uh, White Yote. Zia McCorgi. And our two podcast hosts here. Both have yeah. stories in it. So you guys can now talk about this other secret project. I, I'm not sure which one of the secret projects I keep referring to over the course of the year this one was, but this was one of the secret projects that I kept referring to over the course of the year. Me too. <laughs> and now you know. Although it wasn't the secret project. The secret project, like capital T, capital S, capital P, is something totally different. And it's still secret. And it's still secret. Sorry. But this was a cool secret project, so we're very happy that we can talk about it. Yes. Now, um, what days did you guys get again? Just... Let them know. I got Saturday. I got the child born on the Sabbath day. So for those familiar with the poem, you can uh, Google it. It's on Wikipedia. Google but that shit. Oh, Google that you shit. You don't know the poem? Um, well, Does Siani know not. the poem? I'm not sure. Siani definitely knows the poem by now. Do you know the poem? <laughs> Come on up. Recite the poem for like us. Like off the top of your head. <laughs> do, do you want me to say who has each day? Or? Uh, just Sure. Just, well, just recite the poem first and then. Okay. It's a... Uh, Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is full of woe. Thursday's child has far to go. Friday's child is loving and giving. Saturday's child works hard for a living. And the child born on the Sabbath day is bonny and blithe and good and gay. So you can see why he gave me the Sabbath day one. Oh, and uh, Taryn has Monday's child. Uh, Foosball has Tuesday's child. Uh, White Yote has Wednesday's child. Uh, Zia McCorgie has Thursday's child. Uh, I have Friday's child. Cam Cam has has Saturday's child. And Kyle has Sunday's child, or the Sabbath day. Okay. Thank you very much. And there you go. It was a cool idea, and we were were pretty excited to be part of it. Before being part of the anthology, the only part of the poem I remember was that Wednesday's child is full of woe because I was born on a Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> and if you read uh-huh. my stories, or no, as I prove, they're no, not all full disproved. of woe. You disprove. <laughs> the they're full of wheel. <laughs> you can overcome. There you go. English majors can be like, hey, you used a word that people don't use no more. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have two other and little things. Else could be like, I don't think you write Oops. stories about cars. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no problem, no problem. <laughs> uh, don't mean to interrupt your shenanigans over there. <laughs> well, you're part of the don't, shenanigans. Now. I know, I, totally. <laughs> don't let our banter get in the way of, your, of our podcast. Wait, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> it's serious time now. Yes, uh, serious podcast is serious. We, uh, we're basically the probably the most uh, active distributor for bad dog books in the States since they're in the Netherlands. Um, and I do have uh, a couple of titles from uh, bad dog books that are coming out also that I've been given permission to announce to this. Uh, one of these is, you know, the unsheathed exclusive. So you have the big news here. Uh, the first one is um, volume three of roar will be coming out uh, sometime probably in the first quarter ish. 
right? Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the editor in the audience. Uh, but it, it, I believe, is coming together quite nicely, and uh, I'm glad that it's it's been picked up again. It's a good non-adult uh, anthology. Each issue has a different theme. Uh, so I'm I'm looking forward to another volume. We've been asking, have people ask us when the next one's coming out. Um, the other big one is um, since we were talking about gray muzzles earlier, this is uh, <laughs> very appropriate. So Alex has secured rights to publish Buster Wild, the Queer Wolf. Wow, that so, is old school. Actual print edition. They have uh, gone and found all the original sketches, all the original strips, rescanned them. I just yeah, I'm looking at like <laughs> half the audience <laughs> is like, looking at Fuzz like, tell, what are you talking you tell about? The young, this like, is the young people in the audience are just kind of going, Buster, <laughs> what? What was that? This is the gray muzzle effect. Yeah, <laughs> He's a werewolf. He's a confused straight man by day and a flaming gay werewolf by night. <laughs> like not not just not just a little gay either, but like a lot gay. like really gay and also awesome. I think yes. we've broken at least one audience member's brain. <laughs> but uh, yeah, they've rescanned the original strips. Um, they may have done some relettering and cleaning up and everything. Um, but yeah, this is this is going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to having that on my table and uh, making all of us all old furries very happy. <laughs> awesome. It was one of the first. Um, comic strips i found when uh coming into the fandom so it'll it'll be good to see it out there yeah excellent that's great so news that's uh that's pretty much what i've got right now um so i'm looking to tear in to make sure i haven't forgotten anything but there we go um well before before we kind of open it up to the audience um he's saying something part two which one Grunwe oh, well, yeah, we also do, sorry, interrupt you again. <laughs> we also do distribution for a couple other companies, uh, Dark Horse Comics being one of them. And um, uh, the second volume of Grandville is, uh, is basically out now. Um, my stock of it will be waiting for me when I get home from that other convention. So um, if you guys picked up Granville 1 about a year ago, this is the sequel. It's a very nice little hardcover from Dark Horse Comics. Um, Badger Detective is the main character. It's basically a steampunk alternative universe furry detective murder mystery. So volume cool. two of that will be available. Um, so while we have you guys both here, I mean, that's a real impressive slate of stuff to look forward to for next year. Um, we need to kind of start saving now. <laughs> Um, how do you guys feel about the state of furry publishing and the audience? You know, people, furry has always been a very visual fandom, and it's been like pulling teeth to get people to buy books and read books. Do you think that that's changing, or do you think that there's just more people becoming aware of books, or, you know, how do you feel about it? I wouldn't say that really th there was ever any barrier to buying books other than the fact that there were not a lot of books to buy that were being produced by the fandom. I mean, there have been novels in the past, obviously. Um, you know, there's there's plenty of writers both within and you know out the fandom who produce novels that all of us or a lot of us have like read and enjoyed. But there wasn't really we've never had anything like the current schedule where we have you know novels coming out almost non-stop within the fandom and being released on a on a on a frequent schedule i, I mean paul kid used to get a a novel out every once in a while and there were others certainly but um you know the the volumes there people have stuff to read people are reading it people are excited about it um it's good stuff which is you know always good too and that's not saying the old stuff wasn't good. There just wasn't enough of it to reach critical mass, I think. And we've reached that now. So, Yeah, I'd, um, I would totally echo uh, what Jeff has said there. Um, also, Paul Kidd is the other uh, guest of honor at FC this year, oh, which, cool. is, which is kind of mm -hmm. cool. It kind of rolls into that. Um, it, it does seem to me like when we first... Um, purchase for a planet it was mostly comics and magazines and a lot of visual stuff and we've added more and more um books and you know prose material and nowadays it really seems like the the larger share of our sales is into books and um and their the fan base is just growing and i think the fan base for books in particular is very dedicated 
Um, it's maybe because there was uh, a lot less of it in the past, and so they're they're really grabbing on to it. But you know, I think the the quality is going up. The uh, the readers are loving it. There's more and more readers. Uh, I'm actually really encouraged to see that we're getting more and more young readers too, because um, there's all those statistics. I think I'm sure you guys can quote them about how few people actually read uh, in this country nowadays, and to have. A small little niche like our community having a very growing uh, reading segment is, uh, I think, very encouraging. I think, and one of the things that we've talked about on this podcast in the past is that the furry community is kind of a unique fandom in that there is no canonical source material. Star Trek has the Star Trek show, Star Wars has the movies, um, most other kind of science fiction niche fandoms have some kind of um, material that it's based around which is why I always kind of feel like furry is very similar to cyberpunk in Mm -hmm. that it's about a concept and almost about an aesthetic rather than from a a source material and cyberpunk sort of generated their own source material and that's kind of what's happening now in furry fandom and the fans are really hungry for you know good stories that speak to that aesthetic that they want to um, that they want to follow yeah, makes sense to me. <laughs> the fact Fans that anybody listens, hungry. A, the fact that anyone <laughs> listens to our podcast is testament to the fact that we're hitting upon something. The fact that we're apparently in the Welcome to Furry manual, according to a couple people who've emailed us. Like, I became a furry last week, and now I'm listening to Unsheathed. I love it. It's like, I'm not a furry, but I was listening to Notcast, and they told me about you. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why are you listening to either of us? Oh, never mind. Thank you for listening. <laughs> we got, I think I don't think this letter came to the podcast, but I think this was just, this was one that was sent to me about the books, but it was just somebody who said, I didn't realize I was a furry until a friend of mine started showing me this stuff, and I was like, holy cow, I'm a furry. <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and now he's listening to the podcast and everything, so... Yeah, it's that's yeah, the word for that weird thing I am. <laughs> yeah, and that actually brings up an interesting thing that we've discussed several times as a as a company, and that's really that 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 furry is is a, is is a term for something that I th- think a lot of people are, but in a way, putting a term on it can also drive some people away too. So it's it's something that we're always kind of kind of dealing with is is that. You know, something like Black Sad, because the creators of it never called themselves furry and, you know, don't consider themselves furry, suddenly their material's not furry, it's just art. Even though it is, to us, very furry, and of course any one of us could look at it and say, oh, that's furry material. It's not because they don't call it that, but by not calling it that, they get more, I don't know, they may get some more... um, uh, distribution or some more <laughs> options i don't know it's really kind of cool there's a couple of folks like that have actually even though they're not they don't consider themselves furry have still embraced the, the fandom um the creators of dream keepers um don't consider themselves furries but they go to several of the furry conventions and they they market their graphic novels uh to the community and to the mainstream um which i think is very cool and that they don't want to shun the uh community or disavow themselves of the of that label they they embrace it uh, and realize that they have a a built-in audience here for the, the kind of story that they're yeah. telling stan sakai was good like that too he was yeah. coming around because he was bringing his daughter to him too so you know he didn't think we were that bad of people if he was going to subject <laughs> her to us yeah and one of one of the other things that we're starting to see these days is um, conventions like Rainforest, who really are trying hard to not just embrace furry writing, but really focus their convention around it. I mean, they've told me a couple times they want their convention to be the convention where all the furry writing news happens and where all the writers gather. They want to have the best writing track. And, you know, a lot of other conventions that Further Confusion is doing a lot of great stuff with their writing track. We have their writing track lead in the audience here. Um, and 
uh, Camp Farrell, actually, when they asked uh, when they asked me to be a guest, they said partly it was because they wanted to expose more people to the writing aspect of furry. So I think there's a lot of awareness inside the fandom as well that wasn't there previously. But again, that might have just been because there wasn't too much source material. But it mm-hmm. is interesting that it's also starting to collect the people from outside the fandom who are doing material that's relevant but that are also open to it just as a tip launch a book at rainforest as uh we launched we launched oh, yeah. uh deathless Absolutely. by graveyard greg and they uh they threw us a launch party and put it on the schedule and they provided like six different bottles of wine like two tables worth of hors d'oeuvres and uh the con chair came in and uh it spoke uh, as he had to me privately also about how much uh furry writing meant to them as a convention and what they were trying to do so just the the reception and the the importance that they basically they they held the launch party in the super sponsor lounge so they they kicked all the super sponsors out for a couple of hours (laughs) and if you come in here it's for this uh, book launch party and uh that a raffle it was a great time but the con really threw a lot of weight and importance behind um a book launch party and i was i was very impressed i thought it was very cool <laughs> screw yeah, you but, super sponsors author coming through that's right <laughs> yeah high but, roller <laughs> but did they have milk and cookies they did not have milk and cookies all right then. <laughs> case closed and hey i have wine so um, so, do any of you guys out in the audience have questions for either the publishers, anything about furry writing, uh, thoughts, anything to contribute? Questions about well, publications, about questions submitting. Who runs the Furry Writers Guild, anything. maybe? We were Nothing really say. informative. There's 489 <laughs> of you Come on. out there. Man, tough crowd. Yeah. <laughs> Does Blackfeather want to come up and talk about the awesome FC writing track this year? <laughs> Hi, my name is Blackfeather. Um, I'm running uh, the track for next year's uh, 2011's uh, FurCon, the writing track, and um, I'm trying to finalize things. I have to get it done pretty soon because the con is only two months out. So um, any of you all have want to put any uh, any input? Um, there's still a little bit of time. <laughs> Not a whole lot, but a little bit of time to get some input into that. So, um, you know, any suggestions or anything else you want, um, I, uh, I'm happy to hear and have feedback from the community. And and after the con's over, if you've been to the, any of my uh, any of the things, uh, let me know what you liked and didn't like. Anything else? So, I'm glad to have feedback. And um, we have uh, I've got four or five people, a um, couple of our guests here, and as well as uh, a number of others. Um, for uh on the track so uh should be good i hope <laughs> yeah we're very excited about it give it to the microphone weasel there sure come on up uh last year come on up talking <laughs> talking to the microphone hi uh so last year i, I went to the fc uh, writing track and uh you had um i think actually uh, kyle and uh and km uh led some uh, writing exercises and i thought those were really neat the, uh, just the concept of, you know, start writing a story. Are you going to keep doing those and uh, expanding them or keeping them? Sure. Well, of course, certainly. I mean, um, most, mostly, I mean, I've, I've some big guidelines on the, on the items, but it's really more up to the panelists what they want to do with their items, and the panelists want to do that. That is great. I'm all for it. So it really, I mean, I'm more as a facilitator. I'm not more, as, more than a director, I consider myself, so more facilitating the writing. Because, you know, I'm way behind a lot of these people in my own writing career, so. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, we've, we've, um, we've committed to doing at least a, a few panels, and certainly um, that kind of feedback is great. So we'll try to get some writing exercises prepared for some of the panels we're working on. Uh, anybody else? Oh, we got one more here, I think. We're getting some questions now. All right, this question is mainly for the publishers. Uh, this is it. My name is Mwali Moo, and I, I really kind of got into furry fandom around 1998, and around that time there were a couple of different lists of uh, furry novels, mostly published by major publishing houses, and I read a lot of them by authors like uh, uh, C.J. Cherry, uh, William Horwood, uh, S. Andrew Swan, and uh, who's the guy that did, like, Spellsinger? Alan <laughs> Dean Foster. Alan Dean Foster. That's right, yeah. Anyway, it seems like... Somewhere around the year 2000, the uh, 
the publish the publication of furry novels from the big mainstream publishers just suddenly kind of dried up and there's still some going on in uh like youth and young adult fiction by authors like david clement davies whom i highly recommend by the way if you have not read his work uh, but do you have any idea why there was suddenly why they suddenly stopped publishing mainstream furry works uh right around that time frame um Jeff here, I would say that that part of the reason is probably because everything dried up around two thousand actually yeah. and what we 're seeing is is really just the 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 broad i don 't know destruction or 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 reduction i would say at least of the uh the the niche markets in a lot of those mainstream publications they they basically uh as the whole printing production distribution model has started to crack around the edges and we're seeing more and more of this as we go forward now um it's they want to go on the safe thing which means they go for the middle of the bell curve stuff now um there was a really big kind of kind of tendency to kind of broaden out at one time mm-hmm. and it's really more kind of they're going a little more for this safe stuff that they publish i mean you can really just go into any bookstore and, and just look at look at these shelves that have sci-fi books on uh the shelves of sci-fi books in any of the big bookstores and there's a lot less than there used to be i mean i remember there were were oh, yeah. were, were two three four sh- shelves of stuff and now there's maybe one or and two like, there's most. like five authors on that shelf yeah, yeah. exactly yeah and, it's and if you, yeah yeah go ahead um if you follow the news out of the publishing industry um most of the big publishing houses are not making a lot of money um there was there was talk about how when the last harry potter book came out which is coincidental because the movie just came out this weekend, it was the most expensive hardcover that had ever been released by a major publishing house at, I think, whatever it was. $40, um, 40 something. I think. And they were barely making any money on those books because so many of the distributors would discount them. You had you know, Amazon giving discounts, and uh, Scholastic was, I mean, they were selling, you know, Billions, millions of billions of books so they were even if they make just a penny a book they still make some money but for most of the titles they put out the volume that they have to sell in order to make money on a title is i believe ha- keeps going up year by year and so something that's going to sell um 500 or 1000 or 1500 copies which might have been fine 10 or 15 years ago is not a money maker now and unless they're sure they can get those five or ten thousand sales out of a book uh, they're just not going to pick it up but at the same time companies like amazon which have sort of the virtual warehouse and can stock millions of titles and the advent of print on demand and printing for small presses like soap wolf and fur planet has made it really possible for smaller publishers to fill in those specialty niches and i think you'll start seeing furry publications on the bookshelves when the read-in segment of the fandom gets to a point where they can sustain book sales in the thousands every year and we're, we're not, we're not, yeah, we're not, we're there not yet. quite there yet from what we've seen but the but way we are th- trending upward yeah the way things are growing i would not be surprised to see it um to see it come around pretty soon and as kit reminds me the whole fandom is growing and I think the segment of the fandom that reads is growing faster than the fandom at large because, as Jeff said, there are just more options now out there. Yeah. And maybe, you know, a while ago, there was basically just Paul Kidd books. And if you didn't like the particular kind of fantasy that Paul Kidd writes, you, you didn't really have any books. Yeah, and, you know, like, you know, we're hearing now, like, so full of talking about now, suddenly our schedule is full of books like where there weren't any before. And, uh, Actually, even just like you know, a few years ago, wasn't wasn't Fur Planet mostly comics and not books? Yeah, when we bought the company, yeah. it had like one or two books, and the rest was uh, magazines and a lot of comics. And I don't know if it's about equal now. I haven't done a, a comparison, but the amount of novels we've put out has exploded compared to the amount of comics that we're putting out these days. And actually, when I was at um, the SoFolf table signing, 
somebody came up and um, one of the salespeople was trying to interest them in the anthology magazine Heat, and they said, you know, I don't really like short stories. I want a novel. I want something that I can really get into, and, you know, build the world, follow characters through it, and all that. And, you know, we're just we're starting to see more demand for those. And so we're starting to see more people try their hand at writing them. And the more people that do that, the, you know, generally you're going to get better quality and uh, more selection. Also, don't turn your nose up at short stories just because they're short. No, no, no. <laughs> they're they're, just they're good for different was... things. I'm just telling people who are out there. I know. I know. It's not, it's not less good of a story because it is less amount of a story. It's okay, KM. It'll be all right. <sighs> You'll write a novel someday. <laughs> someday. It's kind of tumbling around half in my head, half on the page. <laughs> Maybe you can get Summerhill to bring it back in time a year so it could be published next year. Oh, that'd be awesome. Uh, Just use one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions out there? Kit, do you have a question you'd like to... Okay, we have another question from Drenth. So kind of a, a general question for the publishers. Uh, I know... Um, Sorry. Uh, I know that, Kyle, you've experimented with uh, publishing on uh, electronic formats, right? Uh, yes. And I was wondering um, where you thought that was going to go, I mean, because the Kindle's now taking off, and uh, I know, let me give you an example. My father reads voraciously, and so he ends up with this gigantic uh, pile of books that he ends up, you know, has no place to put them. He just gets rid of them after a while. And so I know uh, we talked a little bit earlier about um, you know how the, the book feels to to really hold it in your hands and read. This is before the mm-hmm. um, the podcast. I was wondering if you thought that uh, digital sales were going to be a good uh, way to really um, give more people an opportunity to um, to do this. You know, very small runs. You know, micro runs. You know, if only, only sell ten or fifteen books a year, you can still offer it. You know. Uh, and what your kind of thoughts were on the electronic format as they're kind of emerging? Um, I'll start again on this if if you don't go mind. right ahead. Um, no, no problem. So, uh, Sufflet Press is 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 kind of tackling this. Um, it's been something that we've kind of let the authors handle uh, up until this point, just because uh, we haven't had the the cycles to dedicate to it but it's um something that we're going to be paying attention to uh in terms of how the general um small press publishing's thinking of it uh at least judging from a a a um uh, trade show symposia we were at a little while ago um there's the view of e-publishing at the moment is that it's going to supplement print publication to a certain level. So what you'll have is not print books going away. What you'll have is sort of e-publication filling in for the backlist for sort of uh, cheap paperback sales rather than um, selling the cheap, you know, thin, low quality, basically dime store, you know, read it and toss it paperbacks uh more of that will be going to e-publications more of the backlist so that you can find books that you have wanted to read that are not in print anymore they will be in e-publication um there's also a lot of talk about you know when you buy the print book you get the e-book for you know free or some small amount extra which enables you to you know read it in hard copy or read it in 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 electronic when you're on the bus or you know going away on a business trip or whatever um the whole industry is really kind of figuring it out uh we're not a, we're not at all alone in like being like gee we don't really have these uh, cycles to deal with this and also it's been changing so much i mean a a year ago the kindle only offered grayscale and now you know there's the talk of the color kindle and and of course there's the i the ibooks and the epub and which can do full color and all this other stuff so i mean the whole thing's really changing and morphing almost continuously so uh everyone's playing catch up but what's probably going to happen will be something along those lines it'll it'll be a supplement and you'll still be able to get you know good quality you know print books for stuff um but there will be other options, basically. 
Um, I guess uh, for Planet is kind of in the same boat as uh, Self Wolf and probably a lot of other small presses right now that uh, we're sort of finding our way with the ebooks. Uh, I've done an experiment with one. I, I use my own book as the guinea pig because I have all the, the rights and I don't have to secure digital rights from anyone to test it out. Um, so my book's on the Kindle. Um, it's gone pretty well. Um, I haven't had any issues with that. Uh, I'm pretty much leaving it up to the authors. I've, you know, the idea has has come up a conversation a couple of times. That there are a couple of our writers that are are really interested in trying it out, and I'd be open to doing like uh, a, a Kindle edition, like maybe six months to a year after the initial release of the of the hard copy format, something like that. Um, I guess we were initially a little concerned about Kindle sales cutting into sales of of the actual hard copy books. Um, I have more than one story, though, including myself, of people that have bought the Kindle version in addition to the the hard copy because they wanted something they could take along. Um, in my case, I didn't want uh, to be reading out of position on the train with Gay Fox and Tiger on the cover uh <laughs> i have heard stories of people who've done that and have had to answer questions about mm -hmm. um what the book they're reading was about <laughs> um <laughs> at least one person <laughs> um I, I so i, I just saw some shy hands in the audience <laughs> come up with that i too. think he described that as an awkward conversation that turned awesome <laughs> oh fantastic <laughs> um so i've got awesome. my hard copy of out of position which you know uh, you know, I think maybe for the books that you really, really like, you're going to want a hard copy regardless because, you know, Kyle autographed it when I purchased it. Uh, and that goes on my, you know, on my shelf with, with the books that I like. Uh, and then I've also got the Kindle edition just for uh, carrying around. So, And I have signed a Kindle. Yeah, I was going to say, haven't, did somebody make you sign a Kindle? <laughs> somebody did make me sign a Kindle at Further Confusion. Wow. And I did sign the back of it. But That's cool. I, I, I suppose you could collect like the signatures of all the authors whose books you have on the Kindle on the back. It can hold like 10,000 books, though, so that might be kind of a yeah. challenge. <laughs> By the time you get to, you know, um, James Patterson, you're going to have to write real small. Yeah, then you have to upgrade your Kindle like a year later. <laughs> That's an opportunity f for the format. They have to come up with a way that authors can e-sign the version. And they have actually been actually talking about it. that. That's, yeah. that's great. Oh that's my god. There, was, I love there it. were people who said they wanted some way to, to let the authors um, sign the Kindle. and <laughs> Maybe they could do it on a Nook because the menu for that is, is also a touch screen. So they could just sign the bottom of it and it would apply to the as a digital file. But, but any, you know, just to summarize, I mean, we're We've only got one out now. We're looking to expanding our, our e-publication. It'll be sort of a... Christmas? Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a fursuit parade outside or something. It'll be a slow build-up, and we'll just kind of see how it goes and play it by ear and see what the industry as a whole does. I think small presses are in a much more advantageous position um, as far as e-pubs go than the larger companies. that you know, The traditional publishing industry is like... It's like a Titanic, really. It's very slow to move and adjust to new things. Uh, not that it's sinking. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> although it's, it it's kind of more like the Hindenburg than a Titanic. <laughs> but. <laughs> but, like, but it doesn't turn on a dime. D yeah. Daddy, what were newspapers? <laughs> <laughs> Um, but I think being I more uh, smaller and more versatile, especially with print on demand, we can adapt faster to new uh, markets, things like that. Yeah, and I was going to say, I don't. People are still trying to figure out the purchasing habits of people who buy ebooks versus hard copy books, and a lot of the anecdotal evidence seems to be that the people who are going to buy hard copies are going to buy hard copies, and the people that are going to buy ebooks are going to wait for ebooks. And you know, it doesn't really matter when you release it. Um, just as long as you know the people have, the, they're going to wait for the format that they want to get. Um, do you want to, yeah, come up? That's probably going to depend also a lot on the demographic because I know for me, my fiction books versus tech books and stuff like that. The tech books, I almost always want only on soft, only a soft copy, but the hard copy maybe occasionally to refer to. So all my uh, my programming books and stuff, I always want the PDFs for it. So I always buy the PDF from the publisher there rather than pay a lot more for the paper book, which is harder to use because it doesn't have search. You don't want necessarily searching in fiction because you want to read it sequentially. So 
there really is different. I think unless you're doing like control F cock, you know. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you beat me to it. <laughs> well, I, but I was thinking too. I mean, one of the books that we recommend on here all the time is David Mitchell's Cloud Atlas. And I don't know if I would want to read an e-copy of that because uh, you're constantly kind of flipping back to remember things that he mentioned early on that come up again in the text, and it's just so and much like, easier to oh, do that. Oh, you clever son of a bitch. Right. <laughs> I've noticed with uh, especially the Kindle and e-books that it's a lot of LGBT publishers are going completely digital. Do you think that's because of the same niche market? Because uh, gay people are tech-savvy and better educated. Um, I think there's I think there's also something I think a lot of it is probably what Fuzz said where he's like I don't want to be reading my gay furry book on the train and you know it's just it's not that everybody's self-conscious about that but you know if you've got a book called you know whip me beat me and it's got a you know busty leather clad woman on the cover you're you're you feel much safer reading that on an electronic format where nobody can see what you're reading as opposed to just taking that out and like flipping through it on the subway you know. <laughs> I'd like to add on that. Uh, you know, once you lay out for a Kindle, you know, 140 bucks or so, you want to get all the ebook ebooks you can. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, and I'm sure that's you're, part. Uh, of you're kind of locked in, which is sort of one of the things where once you uh, buy your uh, out of position on Kindle, then you're going to be like, where are the other Kyle Gold books on on, on I, Kindle? And I actually uh, amusingly got an email a couple weeks ago from someone saying. When is Shadow of the Father coming out on Kindle? I wrote Amazon, and they said I had to write to you, and when are you going to put it out? <laughs> and as of this weekend, it is up on Kindle. So I was, if, um, if anybody in the audience had been thinking about buying it, I'm trying to get people to buy it like today or this weekend so that the sales rank goes up. The last time I looked, it was at um, 2,884, which um, by comparison, I think out of position was at like 25,000 or something the last time I looked. So... Wow. Up under 3,000 on uh, Amazon sales rank. So I was trying to get it under 1,000, but I don't know if that worked. Wow, very cool. And I haven't been near a computer, so if anyone out there got a screenshot <laughs> two weeks into the future when this episode is posted. <laughs> <laughs> they hear this. Right. Just so you know, when you were saying just now about how, like, oh, you've already dropped your money on the hardware, and now you need as much content for it as you can. Like, I had to bite my tongue really hard not to make a connect joke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went there. <laughs> um. Any other questions? Yeah, that's right, Lovejoy. <laughs> Anything else for the publishers? Um, I think we're we're pretty much at our at our time limit. If you guys have questions about isolation play, we're going to stick around and chat for a little bit afterwards. Uh, we have some After further hours treats. Podcast. As as we always announce at the beginning of every podcast, there is cake, and that's all. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so thank you very much Fudge Wolf and Jeff for joining us we really appreciate the look forward and we are looking forward to all of these titles this looks like it's going to be 2011 is going to be a very exciting year Yeah, very exciting and very sleepless thank and you thank you very okay. much for having us thank you for, for, for what it's worth I hope to add to your sleeplessness sometime soon <laughs> And if uh, any of you guys out there in the audience or listening at home would like to support our podcast and the milk and cookies and uh, fall furry meat, we have our DVDs for sale, which collect our episodes and have new and bonus material, including me reading an old version of the first chapter of Out of Position 2. I'm sorry, Isolation Play. I've been calling it that for so long. Um, so if you're interested in my editing process and you want to compare this earlier version to the version that comes out in print in two months, you can pick up our DVDs. They're 10 bucks each, and the proceeds all go to support the podcast. Um, we appreciate that. Or if you like, you know, gay otters and gay huskies and gay foxes, my stories are on there too. Yes, <laughs> along with him reading them. And uh, Volume 2 does have the infamous Unsheathed Presents number 4, complete with, What's, what's going that? on? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you flustered me so much I couldn't even finish my own line. <laughs> Damn um, you. <laughs> um, yes. Since we're in the plug zone, I just want to sure. add that Sofa Wolf Press can be found at www.sofawolf.com. S-O-F-A-W-O-L-F. Yes, com. and they will have a shiny new website soon. <laughs> and and um, Fur Planet is uh, furplanet.com, just like it sounds. We have a real problem with global warming on a planet covered with fur. <laughs> um. And I have a website at kylegold.com, which has contact information and info about all my books. 
Uh, I'm on Live Journal as Kyle Gold. I'm on Twitter as Kyle Gold, and I'm on Fur Affinity as Kyle K Y E L L. Uh, I don't have a website or a publishing company, <laughs> but <laughs> Aww. Aww. but I do have wonderful listeners and readers like you. Yay! Uh, and you can find me <laughs> as Kim Hirasaki on Fur Affinity and Live Journal and on Twitter. Uh, I don't make a lot of big announcements because I don't really have a lot of big things to announce. But when I do have them to announce, I usually cross-post to Twitter just because I don't, you know, begrudge people for not checking the desolate wasteland that is sometimes my journal. Yeah, and whenever I post something on Live Journal, I try to tweet about it as well and provide a yeah. link back and sort of tease you with what the post is going to be about. Well, see, but like you like at least post something like every day. I try. I post something like every month and a half. And then I link to other people's posts, too, which sometimes gets me in trouble when people don't read where it was linked from. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, I saw that. I look for our Rudder Swish publishing coming soon there, <laughs> Kevin Harris. Oh, that would be awesome. Oh, I would wa- not want to compete with you two fine gentlemen. I'd rather work with you and use my powers for good and for awesome. We all strive to do that. Well, thank you all again for coming out on this Saturday night. We appreciate you. Without you, we would not be sitting here week after week talking into microphones. or we Still. Would, but we wouldn't be having so much fun. Yeah. So thank you all for coming. <laughs> now, I hear there's some other thing going on here in this hotel. So go off, enjoy. Have fun. Thanks again, and keep writing. Yep.